Okay. Uh, th this is my first experience moderating, so if I if you see me doing something wrong, you should tell me. Um, all right. So uh, everybody, add your uh, add your name to the attendees list, as some folks are already doing. Um, if you joined late, I'll re I'll just repost the doc. So the doc is in the chat. That's where you want to add your name. Oh, sorry, the my machine is just like unable to handle uh, the doc and uh, Zoom at the same time. I don't think they can be taken. Out. Oh, it's funny. I hear that from other people too. Yeah. Okay, all right. I have that all the time. All right, uh, we need another note taker. Our first one can't do it. I'm getting. Can it, would someone be so kind as to take notes? All right, all right. Okay. Brandon, thank you. All right, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, all right, all right. So Brandon is gonna take notes. Uh, all right, moderator checklist, ensure that no, there's no taker, start recording, we did that. Call for additional agenda items. Oh yeah, so um, if you scroll down to the agenda, um, please add additional items now. Uh, right now there's really only to, I can't understand what your name means, so I think there's only two agenda items right now. I think that's specifying a, a format. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, so add your additional agenda items, and then it looks like we also have a demo um, that will kill Netflix, awesome. Uh, and then um, we'll have some time for Q&A. Okay. I'm going to start the meeting then officially. I mean, I'm going to start the agenda. Uh, so WS, so this is Victor's topic. Uh, WS star a bit wonky moving to new server now. Can you, Victor, can you just talk about that? Sure. Um, there is not a lot about it, but basically for the last 12 hours or something again, uh, WebSocket star, which is used by the JavaScript project to find each other. In the in the browser, it's it's a bit wonky because of the server where it's running. So right now I'm moving it to a different server. So if you start seeing errors that it cannot connect, please ping me. Uh, hopefully it should be smooth. But just so you know, if you start seeing socket errors with the the P2P WebSocket star, you know what's happening. Rob. Okay. Uh, um, it, oh. uh, it seems like we've had that problem a bunch of times recently. I was just wondering if it's sort of the same thing and it's something we can fix or if it's just different stuff every time and we're encountering all kinds of different issues. No, it's, it's been the same, the same issue. So we, we have been running this service on a, together with a tool called Doku, which is like a self-hosted Heroku uh, bash collection of bash scripts, basically. And we've had this issue a couple of times before, and usually we just have restarted it, and we put it in the in the backlog to do in the future, to properly move it, but now it's starting to happen again, and again, and again, and I want to be able to not having to go in and restart it always. So I'm gonna try to fix it now, forever, or for the future. Uh, any other questions? Raise your hand. And or if your video is off, then put you a post in the chat or turn your video on. Okay. okay. I don't think anyone's raising their hand. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, uh, Fritz. Yes. Yeah, uh, that'll affect PeerPad, won't it? So, what, what's your downtime expected? It will. It will affect PeerPad, uh, but I am I am not gonna switch the DNS until I confirmed everything to be working. So I will try myself with a development version of PeerPad as well, and I will probably ask in the IPFS Dev IRC room if someone wants to help me test it as well before we switch out the DNS entry, and then we can make sure everything is working. Then we switch it up. We will still keep running the old one in case people use the other. URL we have for it, which is cloud.ipfs.team. Uh, hopefully, they should be using the libp.io URL, but maybe there is some other places using that. So we're still gonna continue running that and then uh, just switch the DNS once everything is confirmed working. Great. Any other questions? Ah, Dimitri. 
Um, are you going to be trying to fix the issues with uh, the implementation itself? Okay. No. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I know that uh, MKG two thousand one or or that username. He tried to fix it as well. I know Visu uh, looked briefly at it, but then they came up with a different protocol for it uh, as well. Uh, but then in the, in the end, we, we didn't move forward with actually fixing the implementation itself. And there are two different issues with W. So when I say wonky, uh, there are two different issues. One issue is when we have a lot of peers connected, we have a memory leak, which is what Visu and MKG tried to fix. Uh, but there is another issue where every service that we run on cloud.ipfs.team after X amount of hours or days or weeks, the containers suddenly lose their connectivity. And we have not been able to figure out why. And it's happened to me in the past with Doku as well. So I'm just going to put it up on a new server without Doku. So at least we can avoid this network issue that we're having. Uh, but then we still have the issue with the with if there is a large of number, uh, number of peers, the service will run out of memory. But then it restarts and then everything works. Uh, but this network issue is not that simple. Just a, a restart of the container doesn't solve it. Okay. Um I'm trying to see any more hands. Oh yes, sorry. Uh, yes, Johnny Crunch. So uh, why don't you just run it under Kubernetes and actually have it so it actually automatically restarts on failure? So um, if you would like to deploy Kubernetes for us, do that. It will be lovely. <laughs> I, I I am just trying to like fight the fire and just deploy it on a different server because I know the. The issue right now is not like managing the container and have a lot like orchestration is not a problem. The problem is just Doku that we're using now have a problem where a container loses network connectivity and restarting the container does not work. You have to stop the container, delete it, and then create a new container based on the image and then you can uh, run it again. While the number of peers, maybe we can do some orchestration to like fix that, but that's in the future. Right now, I just want it to be actually working, which it is not, if that makes sense. Yes, Mike. I'll just say, coming from a, from a Docker and Kubernetes background, I think this is the kind of thing Kubernetes is really good at. You can do, you can, uh, you can write your own custom health checks in Kube, so you can have code that actually looks at the, what, what is the pod failing, and then determine what action to take so anyway i don't any maybe i, I just want to reiterate that the, our problem is not the orchestration or like restarting the container the problem is docker the problem the service that is launching the container and i'm not going to switch out all of that or deploy kubernetes that's a lot of uh, overhead for just deploying a service for us right now maybe in the future it makes sense okay okay all right uh any other you know, so yeah um rob I just want to say um, I think I think what Victor's saying makes a lot of sense that right now there's a there's an easy immediate fix which is just to redeploy it bare metal um, but it definitely sounds like there's a worthwhile discussion to be had about how to make it more robust because just redeploying it on another server is not going to fix the it can't handle so many connections problem and things like that um, so maybe Victor if you could make an issue where people can discuss like the right solution and figure out how to enact that after you're done putting out the fire. That'd be good. Yeah, we've had discussions about a new protocol for signaling in general to have the peers doing signaling and like how we can fix the current implementation, how we can rewrite it in a different language and stuff. I will find the issues for this and I will put them in the notes so you can catch up there. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's go to the next agenda topic, which, uh, uh, yeah, of course, I lost the agenda. Oh, okay, good. All right, so update about the upcoming IPFS 
and lib p2p user meetings or dev meetings sorry not user meetings uh, which we previously were calling the ipfs summit uh, we're renaming it to dev meetings for clarity so now going forward there is the ipfs conference which will happen in lisbon in november that's ipfs conf in november but in July, sort of as a setup for that, we're having dev meetings, developer meetings for the people who are actively involved in maintaining IPFS or libp2p or very actively involved in directly consuming the APIs of the libraries and protocols we're producing. So uh, there's the smaller dev meetings that are happening in July, then there's a much bigger meeting happening in November. So. The smaller meetings, you're going to have to apply to attend those meetings because we are keeping it small and focused. So you have to establish that you are, you are actively, you're going to be able to actively contribute to these very focused working meetings in July if you want to attend. And so we have a, a draft of the application form for that up. And if you want to help test that form, I've put a link into the notes. So. That form might change a little bit, but you could treat this as your real application. We'll follow up with you if you've filled it out and we change the form. And so like if a couple of you could try filling out that form. I added a little field at the end that's like, how did this go? Uh, feedback about the form. So please give feedback if there's fields missing or if there was something stupid about the form or there was something, or if there's a typo, just put it in there and we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, related to that is the user registry. That is very, very likely to change over the next week or two, but go ahead and test it out, add your project, uh, let, us know, let us know how that form goes. That one's much longer. We're gonna try to make it simpler <laughs> if we can. <laughs> um, so if you have ideas about how to make it more pleasant to fill out. Um, and then the GitHub repo where we're tracking the planning for the summit, that will be public later this week, uh, maybe even later today. And we'll be launching a website for the conference, which will also have info about the dev meetings um, as soon as possible. So within, we're, we're working hard to get that website up and shipped with information. So that's the quick update about these dev meetings and then the conference in November. Does anyone have questions about that before I, or otherwise we can go on to the next agenda? Chris, Chris yeah, uh, what, what date and where is this dev meeting? The dev meetings are in Berlin, July 10th through 13th. So the IPFS dev meeting is July 10th through 12th. That's three days. And then the lib P2P dev meeting is July 13th. There's a tiny possibility that we will shift everything a day earlier, but that's not super likely. Yeah, it's a low probability uh, possible event. And that information will be up on the GitHub repo and then on the website once those go public. Great, thank you. I don't see any other hands. So I think we can move to the next agenda. Okay, I snuck another um, item in the agenda. Um, we have a new uh, engineer who started um, uh, just today actually. Uh, he's going to be working on libp2p. His name is Cole Brown. Uh, his uh, GitHub name is uh, Biggs. And um, I thought he could just do a, like two sentence kind of introduction if you're. So I'll turn it over to Cole. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Uh, super excited to be on board. Uh, definitely absorbing process and everything right now. But uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say hello, and uh, I will continue to listen uh, closely. <laughs> uh, what did you do before this call? Ah, uh, yeah. So I've I've worked on uh, various roles, kind of resembling distributed systems engineer or architect. Um, some of those in the past have included uh, distributed stream processing. Uh, I worked pretty closely with uh, Media Chain, which was working with Protocol a little while ago, uh, helping them kind of kickstart their um, kind of distributed, uh, not necessarily rights management, but attribution layer for uh, media in blockchain-like environments. Um, but I've done all kinds of web programming and ops work, uh, so generally kind of happy to 
to do whatever's thrown my way. Uh, definitely a big programming languages geek as well. So uh, happy to field any questions or whatever about that. But uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay. So welcome, welcome, Cole. Um, th thanks for doing the introduction. So I just uh, I, I said this uh, in the in the previous call, but just to back it up, like. Um, Cole is the first uh, person at PL who is full-time on libp2p. He will not be the last. Uh, we're going to continue growing the libp2p team. Uh, our goal, you know, as I mentioned in a previous call, our goal is to spin it out as a real uh, independent open source project that is um, of benefit to many, many downstream uh, projects in the community. And uh, if you want to learn more about what we're doing to make libp2p its own project, you should check out the libp2p slash pm repo for project management. Actually here, I'll just post it in the chat. Uh, but that's where I'm posting everything. You know, like we're doing a call every other week. Um, we, you know, we're trying to get people on IRC. Um, we might do a mailing list. So that, that URL is where you would find out about that stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, I, think, I think that's enough on libp2p on this, for this call. Let's see, on the agenda, do we have anything else? Couple of things anyone else want to introduce themselves? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, does that? Yes. So, does anyone else want to introduce themselves? Uh, anybody who's new, um, or uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, so my name is Arkadi. Some of you already know me from uh, a couple of years ago when uh, uh, I was at Media Chain, um, and we were you know building a lot of stuff. On with P2P, uh, so I've had some good conversations with, with, with some of you over that. Uh, and uh, now I am coming on for uh, for now for, for a three month stint to uh, help out with the Internet Archive project, and then uh, we'll see where it goes from there. So, uh, and yeah, I guess I'm the PM on that, so. Yep, and uh, I will have a similar PME repo uh, ready for you guys to look at uh, shortly, hopefully today or tomorrow. Yeah. And then I want to introduce uh, Rhett, who's on the call, who I met at the uh, Consensus Hackathon here in New York. And uh, he, we worked, we collaborated with a project together, and uh, I just thought it would be interesting enough to present it to you all. which believe it or not is quieter than the rest of the conference, but I, I don't know what the signal to noise ratio is like, but how's that for you guys? Is it too noisy? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Okay, great. All right. Um, I'm doing this on my phone. It, it seems to be working, so, and, and unfortunately my camera's at the bottom of my screen, so it's kind of confusing. So, okay, so how's that for picture and sound? Are we good? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So, yeah, we met John at the hackathon. We pitched and we said, hey, we've been building this peer-to-peer -peer movie distribution and sharing system in Australia for about five years now, and we want to use IPFS. And he came up to us and said, hey, that's really cool. You know, do you know how to do it? And we said, no, we've been trying to get in touch with, with the, um, the IPFS guys uh, without much luck. Although we did post something a little while ago into the forums and had a few conversations. And he said, let me, would you like me to show you how to do it? And they were like, yeah, great. So over the hackathon, we actually got IPFS going on our system. But I guess, you know, if you like, I can just give you a brief run through of what we've been doing and how we think it fits fantastically with, with IPFS and the P2P. Is that good? Yeah, that'd be great. That's, should we, should that's we the demo. See if anyone else wants to introduce themselves before we go into the demo. Right. Okay, sure. Why don't we do that? Let's let, let's do what you're proposing, Rep. But first, let's just see. Is there anyone else who wanted to introduce? Him or herself. Okay, I don't see any. Um, so there is one more agenda item. Let's come. Let's do the demo first, and then let's come back to it. It's about uh, Google Docs versus Cryptpad. Uh, so if that is that that works for people. Um, okay, so so why don't why don't we go forward with with your demo, Rhett? Terrific. Thanks very much, Mike. Let me just share my other screen. Okay, there it is. Oops, I have to push the share screen button. Yeah. 
Yep. No, we're just seeing a blank. Okay. So you guys get in. We're just seeing a black uh, box. Right. Oh, now we're seeing your screen. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let me. I think I better my video off. It's probably chewing up too much of my phone bandwidth. Yeah, your sound's breaking up a little. Okay. I'm gonna turn my video off though because it's taking up too much bandwidth. I think. Just hang on a sec. Okay. Okay. Let me just see if I can find where that is. <laughs> Hopefully, you turn off the video. We'll fix this. Okay. Just um. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find a way to do that, and I'm not having much luck. So. And the, uh, I'll hide it's, myself. It's usually an icon at the bottom of your video, that. a camera icon. Like the bottom left. Yeah, I just lost the. Uh, I think you may have succeeded in turning off your video because I don't can not see you now. Oh, now you're back. Okay, sorry. I, for some reason, I just. Okay, so now I've turned off the video. Let me share the screen. That was a bit hairy for a minute, but I think we got there. Sorry, guys, I'm new to Zoom. Okay, so you should have a voice for me and, and a picture of the system. Yes, yes, we have those. Yes, yes. Not to Okay, great. So this is this is the system we built. It's an end-to-end -end, uh, distribution system for, for content, as well as movies. We do games and virtual reality. What we've done is we've smashed together the best of peer-to-peer -peer with the best of top-down CDN, and made it secureable with the studios, which has been going on for close to five years now. We we had previously we had a Manufacture on demand technology where we were burning CDs and DVDs in retail stores. That got us the relationships with the studios. So we've been working with them for about 10 years on digital distribution. They know us, they trust us. Um, and so, um, we've been, as I say, we've gone through about a three to four year process of approval with the studios. Uh, we've got approval confidentially from Sony about a year ago. Uh, and so that's kind of given us the spearhead we needed to the rest of the studio distribution. We, I, I, we've been working with the, the guys in Australia and then we, we discovered, and I have to say somewhat belatedly, and I'm a little bit embarrassed about this, but, you know, working in Australia, head down, et cetera, um, we discovered um, file, uh, sorry, uh, IPFS and the P2P only earlier this year in January. And when we found it, I just went, this is exactly what we wanted to do, you know, and you guys have just done what we had we would have had to do so we, when we we did a, effectively a systems level patent back in 2014 and we, we had a spec for what we needed to build and that was a file system a protocol stack some sort of directory system and what we called from day one maybe share points frequent share points um and you know that's far cool. so we also do movie sharing but we also we, we allow people to share movies and the way we do all of this and the way we've got the acceptance from the studios is is to meet their full technical specs for distribution all the way up to 4K. And what that requires fundamentally is hardware DRM. And we initially had an ARM design. It might be worthwhile me going down to another slide here, which kind of explains the, um, the process. There we go. Um, so that's been going on pretty much in parallel with us in Australia and and you guys and, and one in particular up here. Um, we, we've been working at a systems level with the studio and we started with an ARM design and that pretty quickly ran out of steam. Then we started working with Intel uh, around about the fifth generation and, and then they released their sixth generation but really the seventh and that just changed the world. They completely changed their security model. Uh, PlayReady 3 is in the hardware. And that enables us to use PlayReady 3 SL3000, which is 4K 
hardware certification, and that's what the studios require for 4K. So because we're, we're super high premium quality, we're effectively a progressive download peer-to-peer, -peer, we solve the spinning wheel of death problem. Right? Streaming just, you have to have 25 megabits per second to stream 4K video. And according to my 85% of people who have broadband don't have that. I mean, a lot of you, a lot of you guys in America have that, but a lot of people outside the capital cities, even here, and certainly everyone in Australia, or pretty much everyone, doesn't have 25 megabits per second. So this is a real global problem. The studios know this. Netflix also know this, but um, and so they they're very keen to work with us for a couple of reasons. One is that we meet their security levels. We're signed off by Sony for that. Sony are leading everybody. They put their app on the PC almost a year ago as well. So they're really um, are leading on this. And, and they know that they, they have to solve the distribution problem, first of all, for quality. But secondly, they also hear on social sharing, right? And we've always had this concept. And it wasn't actually until John and I were having a drink, you know, after the first night of the hackathon, and I suddenly, the penny dropped. And I said to him, you know, we, didn't, we don't know why no one else is doing all this stuff. Because, and then we realize it's because we're doing it peer to peer and we have control over everything and we have that whole mindset. But we've just got this whole social content sharing experience thing happening that the studios know is the future. So, and, and, and in fact, John, I don't know whether you saw my text this morning, but Mark, who's a hacker who's here with me in New York, got the social sharing bit of our app working over IPFS last night, largely thanks to John. So thank you for that. Um, and, and so I, I, we, we've got a little video run through, but it, it's, it's, it's either on YouTube, um, and I'll put the link in the Google Doc if you like. That's probably the best place to look at it, rather than me sort of subject you to this noisy environment. And um, So I'll put that link into the Google Doc, and it's a run through of the app. How we, we use, we don't use the blockchain for distribution. That's locked and approved by the studios. We're not changing that. What we use uh, the blockchain and crypto for at the moment is for um, is to reward people. What we imagine we'll use it for is, is to reward people for sharing their disk and bandwidth, right? Um, pretty much like Filecoin, we'd love to work with you guys. We'd rather use Filecoin if we can. So if we can get some questions answered from you guys, then you know maybe we can use Filecoin. That would be better than building our own. But you know, maybe, so that would be great if we could just get into some discussions with you guys about how we can use as much of this as possible. Yeah, I think we can. Is there anyone on file? Is there a public file coin call of any type or no? No. Okay. Maybe we. Okay. We'll try to. We'll try to connect you with somebody offline who, who maybe can help you uh, get the questions answered. Okay, that would be great. And and obviously John's been a huge help. But you know, any help we can get on on IPFS and lib P2P and the rest of it as well would be fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And you you know about our forums, right? Like that's. Uh, um, that yeah, the for the forums and yeah, there's there's not a Filecoin user forum yet. No, but free for, for IPFS and yeah. PP, yeah. Discussed that IPFS. Okay. Yeah. I, I dropped a post into the forum some time ago, but I guess being some stranger from Australia, you know, I didn't get a huge response. <laughs> we know. don't discriminate against Australians, but maybe that's a sign we're not doing a good job uh, monitoring the forums. Uh, so we should we should take a look at that, but. Yeah, I guess it was kind of, it was not so much a technical, I'm an engineer by training, but I describe myself as a systems guy pretty much these days, but Mark has taken to IPFS like a duck to water, so they weren't so much technical questions, they were really more, you know, how do we use this stuff, how does it fit with what we're doing, you know, those kind of questions. We also have an IRC channel where the developers hang out. It, for very technical questions, it might be helpful. Um, here, I'll put, it's libp2p on Freenode. There's also IPFS. I'm posting it in the chat. Um, those are like uh, I think for a very technical question that that or it might be the best place to go. Um, we're trying to avoid doing kind of um, support in GitHub issues, so we're, so we're trying to discourage people from asking uh, questions that aren't related to like the actual code of the project in in GitHub. Uh, we were trying to get that either to the discussion forums or if you want to have real-time chat um, There's the IRC uh, The two I just posted um, And yeah in terms of Filecoin, I'll, I'll try to see if uh, we'll talk about offline I'll try to see if there's somebody here who could 
you know, talk to you about what you want to do with Filecoin. Um, you know, we definitely, we have some folks who are trying to work on Filecoin biz dev. So maybe that's a, um, a good, a good connection. Um, okay. Well this, this was good. This was great. Um, I, uh, yeah, no, thank you for doing it. Are there any, so, uh, stop sharing your screen for a second so I can see if there are any, any questions. Uh, otherwise it's hard to, it's hard, it's hard to see all the faces when there's a screen share going. I uh, I think I see Johnny. Okay, I don't know how I do that. Just bear with me. Okay. Sorry, Johnny. Are you were you raising okay, your hand? Or no, you're not. Okay. Okay. No, uh, just just wiping. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay. Thanks. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Um. Okay. If you have a question, ra uh, raise your hand. I'm not seeing any. Okay, uh, I don't think there are any questions on this. Uh, so, okay, with that, with that in mind, let, let's uh, um, go to the last item on the agenda, which is about uh, crypt patents instead of Google Docs. Um, so the comments now that this has been discussed before, do, do people with uh, strong feelings on this want um, just to just jump in and about how to see on this? I can just jump in with the context victor last week we discussed it it was we were just sick of everyone having to like remake the hack pad every week because the generator still wasn't working so we made the google doc and it actually just like worked well people jumped in and like helped with the notes more than they do with the hack pad and so we discussed it last week i asked if we should create an issue people said just just switch it and so maybe that was a mistake. We should have created an issue and discussed it. So sorry, this like happened without you. That you didn't get the notice because we didn't make that issue. So that's like the background. I also you can use the GitHub issue that's linked there to discuss off off this call. But if you want to jump in now with information, go for it. What I was gonna say is that there is no reason we need to discuss this here. So let's continue in the issue with them. Cool. Okay, then uh, that actually concludes the meeting. Uh, well, so so we have one last uh, block uh, Q and A or help wanted. And is there anyone who wants to just ask a, ask a question or ask for help or yes, to make any <laughs> kind of statement while we're all together? Any anybody? Okay, I counted to 10 in my head. I don't see any hands, so. Um, okay, then I think we can conclude the meeting. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Bye.